Hey guys, here I have the new Galaxy S23 FE Indian retail unit. I had ordered it online on the Samsung store and it just got delivered yesterday. In today's video, we'll run different benchmarks on this Exynos 2200 powered phone to see how powerful this hardware is. So without any further ado, let's get started. Before we start, I want to quickly state the test conditions. The ambient temperature of the room is close to 25 degrees Celsius. The phone has been freshly booted with no apps running in the background. It's running on Android 13 with One UI 5.1 and September security patch. The screen brightness is set to 50% and after each test, a break of 5 to 10 minutes is taken to ensure that the phone returns to normal temperature before starting the next test. Alright, now let's start with Geekbench 6 CPU test. Okay, that's a good score. This is similar to the score of Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 devices. Next is the Geekbench 6 GPU Vulkan test. Okay, now that's an impressive score. That is about 25 to 30 percent higher than Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 devices. Next is the PC Mark Work 3.0 test. It is a mixed test to simulate the general day-to-day -day use. Okay, this phone scored close to 13,500 points, which is slightly lower than Snapdragon 8 Gen 1, which scores around 15,000 points. Next is N22. First, we'll run its storage test. Ok, this score is above average for UFS 3.1 type storage, but not the best as some phones can score above 70,000 points with higher sequential write speeds. Next is the complete N22 test. This benchmark tests almost every aspect of the phone's performance, including CPU, GPU, memory and UX. Ok, now that's a really good score. This is higher than the general Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 score by about 10%. Next is the CPU throttling test which runs for 15 minutes. Ok, so as you can see, the CPU throttled to 74% of its peak performance. This is a good result and on par with how most flagship grade chips generally perform. Moving to GPU focused tests, first is the GFX benchmark. Here I am running all the on-screen tests. All the tests are done and that's a pretty good result. Other than Aztec Ruins high tier, the frame rate was above 60 fps in all tests. This is slightly lower than Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 as that chip can get 60 fps in Aztec Ruins high tier. Finally, the last and maybe the most important gaming benchmark, 3D Mark. Let's start with Wildlife Stress Test. This runs for 20 minutes. Ok, so the highest score is 8300. That is about 15% lower than Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 which scores above 9500 points. However, the stability is 70% which is pretty good for a flagship grade chip. Next is the Wildlife Extreme Stress Test. Even here, the score is about 10-15% lower than Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 and the stability is a good 71%. Now this next test is quite interesting. This is the new Solar Way test. It tests the ray tracing performance. This test won't even run on Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 and 8 Plus Gen 1 phones as they don't support hardware ray tracing. This is a big advantage for Exynos 2200 over Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 as this capability makes this phone more future proof. This score is actually pretty good and just 15-20% to lower than Snapdragon 8 Gen 2. The stability at 75% is also very impressive. Alright, that concludes the benchmark tests of the Galaxy S23 FE powered by Exynos 2200. The results are pleasantly surprising 
and definitely better than what you generally expect from an Exynos chip. Seeing these results, I don't see any major advantage of Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 over this chip. Hope you enjoyed the video and found it helpful. Please like, comment, share and subscribe to my channel down below. Thanks for watching.